Greetings in Jesus' name. I am Sister Sonia Wilson. I belong to the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church, located at 4781 Hamilton Avenue. Our pastor is the Honorable Bishop James Chapman. I will be presenting today a brief summary of the Sunday School lesson or the Christian Education uh, lesson. And our Sunday School superintendent is none other than Minister Kim Johnson, all right? We're going to breathe a word of prayer. Father, we come in your name, Jesus, and we thank you for this opportunity to pray, to thank you, to lift your name up, to ask you to help us. Use us to thy glory. Help us, Lord. We all need to hear from you from morning to noonday to the evening. We need your precious word. We thank you for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. So today's lesson is titled, Abijah Challenges King Jer Jer Jeroboam. I always get that J messed up, okay? So let's talk a little bit about who Abijah is. He is a descendant of King David and the grandson of King Solomon. Let's talk about who Jeroboam is. I think that's Jeroboam. Yeah. He is a descendant of the, son, the servant of King Solomon. Not King Solomon, King Solomon's servant. King Solomon's servant, his, he took over from uh, King Solomon's son. He, they overtook him. I'm not going to go into the story. I want you to read it. So this lesson is found in the second book of Chronicles, chapter 13, starting at verse 3. But if you go from Samuel to Kings to Chronicles, oh my gosh, the knowledge you'll find out about the kings of Judah and Israel is, oh, you'll love it. Trust me. So do that. Study. But anyway, he's challenged. They're challenging. There's a challenge going on here. And King Abijah is letting it be known. He's the king of Judah. And uh, King Jeroboam is the king of Israel. Now, God is with Judah, David. David, he made a promise to David, King David. So God is still with Judah. No matter how much they have rebelled, they disobeyed, he has not left Judah. All right? Uh, Israel, he still loves Israel, but the choice, the promise is coming from Judah. All right? Jesus is from the tribe of Judah. So what's happening here is King Jeroboam thinks, you know, he's putting trust in his men. He's putting trust in who he think he is. And he's going to try to fight against King Abijah. King Abijah tries to remind him of, you know, hey, this is what happened here. This is how you all even got to this point uh, about being a king. And he tries to remind him that you remember that the Lord is with us. He is with Judah. You know, you, you really don't want to do this is what he's saying. You can't beat God. Of course you can't. No one can. So he's trying to let, Ab I mean, King uh, Jeroboam know, you know, back up. But King Jeroboam is full of himself and he's going to try to beat King Abijah who has the Lord on his side. And the note here that we need to pay attention is that King Abijah didn't puff himself up and didn't say we will destroy you. Everything he talked about prior to this situation, he talked about it being uh, about the Lord. He didn't, he didn't say, we will, we will destroy you, our men are mighty men of valor. He didn't do any of those things. He made it clear that he was a descendant of David, who the Lord had made this promise to. He kept the Lord in the forefront. You ever heard the, the, song, uh, the, uh, the saying or the scripture, the battle was not yours, it's the Lord's? This is what King Abijah was letting King uh, Jeroboam know. This is a battle uh, for God. And, and, and they knew, Israel knew. Israel knew and they shouldn't have been fighting each other. They were all together. They really were. They're 12 tribes. But you know, the kingdom split because of sin. I'm not going to go all into that. But nevertheless, of course, King Jeroboam was destroyed. Him and his men, they did not win. The Lord did it. The Lord did it. Read the lesson and you'll find out. And that brings me to this note. When you're fighting, as we fight on our knees, are we fighting for the defense of the gospel in the name of the Lord? Or are we fighting when people mistreat us, dog us, hate us? Are we praying for them using our fighting weapons that way? Because the Bible tells us what to do. But we keep the name of the Lord first. We keep our hearts and our minds set before the Lord. We let nothing separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, regardless of the battle. And that's one thing I learned from this, is that regardless of the battle, regardless of who it was, the Lord was in the forefront of King Ab uh, Abijah's mind. And I pray that you do the same. Keep the Lord in the forefront in whatever battle you go through. No matter how it feels, no matter how overwhelmed you think it is, 
Keep the Lord in the front. Don't ever think or depend on yourself. That's what King Abijah taught us in this lesson. He depended on the Lord. Well, I hope you have a good week and I hope your prayers are being answered as you continue to praise, worship, and seek God. And lastly, I pray that you let your heart be so devoted to the Lord that you just, you can't get enough of it. Okay? So I'll see you next time. And until then, have a great week. Bye.